Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Spirit of Revelation. I'm Bishop Dr. Gloria S. Powell, and we're excited to be coming to you for part two of Surviving COVID-19, The God Way. And I thank God that we have the person of Dr. Seneca Atkinson. She's pastor of New Bethany Family Worship Center International. And I thank God that she has been absolutely amazing in giving you that testimony on last week, but we're gonna pick it up. You're gonna hear how to survive COVID. This day that we're in, this is not a new normal because God's not normal, but this is a new way of us manifesting what God has already put in us and told us what to do. We're gonna tell you, I'm excited to bring this woman of God to the table and let her tell it in her own way. Good. Good evening, Pastor Seneca. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you, Dr. G. It's a blessing to be back with you. And I'm just excited to continue on to just explain to the hearts of God's people, all that are listening, you know, that even though we may be afflicted with not just COVID, but any situation, mm -hmm. any sickness that can come upon us, but to know that God is on our side and that there's a process that we have to go through in the process of being sick. And we learned that this is nothing that you just uh, can pick up a book and read about. I mm -hmm. mean, you have to experience the experience of the love and the power, the healing power of God over your life when you're in situations like these. And, and, and the beauty of it is, is that it's for such a time as this. Santa, because we've never been here before. We've never gone through this place before. So we want to deal with it in, in part. And I know the first thing you said that you have to do when you've been inflicted or, or, or attacked uh, uh, with this dreaded disease, or like you said, any disease, but we're now, we're dealing with a pandemic, a mandemic, a plandemic, whatever they want to call it, but it has repercussions. And I know that you got some answers. And so what's the first thing that people have to come to, Pastor? What's the first thing that has to be dealt with? Dr. G, I think the first thing that we have to deal with um, as a people, and even especially, let's just say, as a woman of God, a, a, a people of faith, you know, um, of course, we know that um, we have to trust in God with everything. But when our body is being afflicted, like COVID afflicted our bodies, I had to acknowledge I have COVID. You know, I have to recognize what I have. I cannot sit there and call it, oh, it's just the flu and it's just going to go away. No, it's deeper than the flu. I mean, it's putting the flu on the run. You know, so you have to understand and, 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 and recognize what your body, because you have to learn your body, you know, and when your body is talking to you, you have to know that not only is your body talking to you, but God is giving you something too as well, you know, because, you know, of course, you know, it's first natural, then spiritual, but sometimes we just want to go on the spiritual side, you know, oh God, oh this and God, oh yes, God is able, but what we're fighting he gives us revelation. He gives us knowledge to overcome. God was going to give me a word in and to stay in his word, to stand on the healing power of God. So I now, had to acknowledge it. And, and, and in doing that, Pastor, when you, when you say I had to recognize it, now a lot of people are in denial about being able to catch it, being able to be exposed to it, mm -hmm. and then even some of the symptoms that are coming on it. How, what, what are some of the detriments of them being in that kind of denial, missing that altogether? And what can be the consequences of that? The consequence could be death because a lot of people died because they didn't believe it was real. So, you know, you have to have common sense. You know, if people are dying all over the place and if they say wear a mask, put the mask on. If they say wash your hands, if they say sanitize, things of that sort, you have to be able to follow rules. You can't step up, you know, I'm a man of God. It's a lot of men of God stepped up in the church when they told them to shut the church down and to stay home and quit doing these big gatherings. And they had these big gatherings and people died right here in our city. You know, so you have to be able to be led by God and say, okay, Lord, okay, I've, I've been afflicted with this. You know, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Lord, you're going to deliver me out of all of them. So show me how do my deliverance come? And then he began to show me how the deliverance was going to come for us. And that was through the word of God, declaring who he is. You got to get to a point where you have to let the word do the work. 
as the word of God says in Hebrews, it says what? That the word did not profit them anything because what? They did not mix it with faith. Mm. Faith without works is dead. So you had that. It was a combination going on. We had to have combos going on. We had to stand on faith and we had the word of God. And in the process, not only stand on faith in the word of God, you have to take medicine. But, you know, we really couldn't get to the doctor because they wasn't giving you anything. But we were already big on turmeric and garlic and, and different things that we began to even put more in our bodies. Vitamin C, vitamin E, you know, all this stuff, making teas, whatever you had to make, trying to say, Lord, we got to flush this out of us. And then that's when the enemy started really dealing with me emotionally. Now, you know? now before you go into that part, because when people try to sidestep the recognition they expose themselves like you said to other people but mm -hmm. at the same time it's almost like sometimes they're living in a denial it's not real faith no some no. people can live they get that 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 thing where they don't recognize the detriment and the danger and they try to downplay it and it's really not faith it's fear working in reverse mm. you see? because you don't have to have you don't have to go on a 40-day fast to just follow mm. some simple instructions Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it, if it costs you nothing to follow the instructions in order to keep people safe as as could be expected, because like you say, mm -hmm. some people could be asymptomatic and they're right. walking around asymptomatic with that mentality of affecting other people while you standing on this fake faith. And I'm yeah, not absolutely. saying that God can't keep you. Of course he can. Mm -hmm. A good medical, a good physical background can hold you. But yes. I'm just saying that there are things that you can do. That this doesn't cost you anything to follow the instruction. Then you said something that happened and I want you to set it up how how you came to this because a lot of times people have had situations where they bought it where they where they caused other people to get it and that they have to deal with and that is remorse yes and you know what that's one of the hardest things i think the remorse was harder than itself catching the the pan the, the covid you know because now because of me i have brought it home to my family and now I'm seeing them suffer. Now I'm seeing my husband weak, near death. I'm seeing one night our daughter was so sick and so weak and we're sick. She had not ate in 24 hours, you know? And I was afraid, not that I was, I was so weak, I couldn't get up the stairs, but I was afraid to go because I was afraid what I was gonna see. Uh, I was going to find her dead. And um, I found her just balled up in the knot, shivering and shaking, you know? And all I can do is just hold her and, and get in the bed with her. Cause I figured this time we, we, we both got it now. I can't pass it to you, you know? And I just, just laid in her bed and just held her, you know? And then just prayed over. But children are very resilient, you know what I'm saying? Because they just, they got that rubber band bounce back effect Next minute, next day, she up, you know, but we're still down. And um, the remorse also, after God brings you out and he heals you, and then you have those around you that didn't make it. And you say to yourself, Lord, you kept me, but you took them. And then that's when you have to, realize and understand the sovereignty of God, that he's God, that he can do what he want to do, how he choose to do it. He reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And it was so hard for me because just like you, and I appreciate you, Dr. G, um, calling and checking on us. And even though uh, I mean, I responded back and you're like, what is wrong with you? You, ain't, you, you know, <laughs> you can call and tell me something, <laughs> you know, you know. Um, but one of uh, our members, uh, and she was my boss for 17 years. She was calling us. And um, this one when I started feeling a little better and I'll never forget it was on a Saturday. And I sat down in the office and I talked to her about an hour on the phone 
and I was just talking and I was just rambling and you just all over the place because you just happy to be alive. I'm just glad to be here. You know, so I just had a whole lot to say. And she had told me that her husband had came down with COVID. They just got tested. And I told her, I said, Mrs. Taylor, please be careful. She said, you know, I haven't been anywhere. I haven't even been to church, but I don't miss nothing. I'm on all the studies. And she was so encouraging. You say, you know, I love you and pastor. Y'all doing an awesome work. I've grown so much, you know, in the midst of this. And um, I'm just weighing it out. And that Sunday she texted me and she said, in the text, I have COVID. I said, I text her back. I had a care package because we had, you know, a lot of stuff left over. Um, we had saline solution that we made, that we used, that really helped our lungs to keep them open. You know, so we want to talk about the different things that you can use, that natural, that mix it with that faith, that spiritual, that got us through some of this, you know. And I remember making her up a care package and I told her, I'm going to sit it on my porch and have your son to come pick it up. And I gave instructions, this is what you need to do. That Tuesday, I talked to her and I called her and I said, how you doing? And she said, she calls my name different than anybody. She says Seneca, she always says Seneca. And she says, Seneca, I'm not doing good. And I prayed for her and I said, I'll call you back and check on you. That was Tuesday, Thursday, she was gone. And in the midst of still sick and to lose this precious woman that was so dear to us and just been through with me through my mom's death, everything, grandbabies born, weddings, the good, the bad, the ugly. She seen it all and, and remain. And to know this took her out and when my son called one morning and said, mom, did you hear about Miss Taylor? And I'm like, what about her? It's like six in the morning. So I knew something was wrong when he called. And it said she passed and I lost it. It broke me. And it still messes with me, you know? Um, it's been a couple months, about three months. And I still say, Lord, and people say, oh, you, you don't question God. That's a lie. He's our father. The word of God says, come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. I mean, let's talk this thing out. You know, I know your ways are so farther than my ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts and you above all. But Lord, I don't understand. And the answer he spoke to my heart, she's mine. What belongs to me, I don't owe you an explanation. So I had to accept my father. That's his will. That was his will. It was her time, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but it was very hard and to know what her sons are going through mm -hmm. because one of them gave it to the father. Wow. So and you can only imagine what they're still going through just celebrating her birthday on Mother's Day. Mm, mm -hmm. You know? Yes, yes, I do. It's, you know, it's I said, really hard. I, I said, and you know what? You brought up something that, that so many people don't realize that you can. It's not so much as questioning God, but you can ask God to explain mm -hmm. something to you. Yes. We don't, we don't question his motives. No. We, we, we want to know what, how we can fix this. Mm -hmm. Fix this in my mind. Fix this yes. in my heart, God. In my heart, yes. And so He knows how to do that. And I remember telling one young woman about her 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 grandmother had it and passed. And there's people around that I had a friend of mine in Hawaii whose sister was one of the missionaries in the Church of God in Christ that had it and came back and her husband and different different ones and they got it and didn't and didn't he didn't die but they did. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, I told, and the God, God gave me this. He said it, it was in Second Kings, I believe it's chapter 19, where he gave a promise to a people that he said, because of your faithfulness, mm. because you kept your promise, he said, there's some terror that you're not going to have to go through. 
Yeah. See, there's some things that God take them home mm -hmm. so that they don't have to stand what he called the evil day. Yes. And, and, and see, everybody don't have to go. Through. I love my mama. My mama been gone 20 some years, mm -hmm. 22 years, seems like yesterday. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't call my mama back into this. Right. Love yes. your money. Mm -hmm. and I, love, I need my mama right now. Right. Amen. But I wouldn't call her. But I, mm -hmm. And there's some that he say, I took a home against the evil day. Mm -hmm. and there's things that we have to do but you yeah. went through that and god god talked to you and god had to minister to you how did you deal with that how did you did that stay with you did you ever get someplace because i know pastor d told you something how'd you deal no. with that remorse you know one thing uh like he would he just reassured me you know of his love he reassured me uh of, of the father's love you know and we don't know why and he would say this, he says, Seneca, the thing is this. And some would say, well, how, why them? How this happened to them, you know? And I never said, how did it happen to me? I just know I wasn't ready to die. You know, I never questioned, you know, why this happened and, and why it had to be me and why I couldn't have been another coworker, you know, but I just knew because of who we are, that we are partakers of God divine's nature. And just like Jesus had to endure, and he endured and he had to bear his cross. This was a cross we had to bear. But thank God, guess what? We live to tell the story. Somebody had to live to tell about it. <laughs> you know, so, so I praise God for that part. As they say, that part. Amen. I praise God for Amen. that part. He came you know? out on the other side. Go yes, ahead. but he would, he would, you know, uh, just reassure me that, you know, not to get down. And, and his words was this, don't get under that. Transfer the burden. He said, don't get under that. Transfer the burden. Meaning put it in the presence of the Father. Process it in the presence of God. Don't get under it. Because if you get under it, it'll take you down. If I, if I would get under, like, well, why did this one die? And why did this die? And, and, you know, it would take me back to when he took my mama. And that's to take me back into a dark place. So he was like, don't. And he would not even let me sometime even finish the sentence. He'll stop me in mid-sentence. Don't get under that. Look what the Lord has done. And it's marvelous in his eyes, you know, don't get under that. But look what God is doing. Look that, look what he did. We didn't die. He brought us out, you know, and I knew it, it wasn't time. It, it wasn't our time, even though I, we felt like this was it. But I like, Lord, this, this is, it, it can't end like this. Mm. This, this is not the time, you know, and then you have to stand on the word of God. Come on now. now you know? I want you to do this because I, I know, I know, and I, this is so good. And I know so many people are being blessed and being informed and that mm -hmm. those words don't get under that. <laughs> yes. oh, wait, and it'll take you into that, that dark place. Mm -hmm. But Pastor, I want you to, I want you to deal with that third thing that third thing that people have to really experience and 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 what what is the real cure we know we know that that saline solution works and to keep that long and there's a physical mm -hmm. manifestation but let's talk about the recovery is there light at the end of that tunnel what the does the light, recovery look like the recovery is this you let the word do the work <laughs> come on tell you us let about the it. word do the do the work and it was the word of god is that we stood on Proverbs 3 and 5 is one of my favorite scriptures. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understandings, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Sanctify me in your truth for your word is true. I had to know that God doesn't honor the tears. He reads and bottles up the tears. He understands the tears. But he honors his word. He watches over his word to perform it. You know, so I had to take him at his word. I had.
had to do with my mother-in-law, my mom, my nana used to speak. What, what did the word say? Take him at his word. Put the word back on him. This is your word. And she would declare, Lord, you said. So I started declaring, Lord, you said that we were wounded for our transgressions and you were bruised for our iniquities. Lord, you said that the joy of the Lord would be my strength. Lord, you said that I'm blessed going in and I will be blessed going out. I had to start declaring the word of God over our lives. Lord, it's your word that's gracious to us that we long to be with you. Our strength every morning, our salvation in the time of distress. That's good. Our salvation in the time of distress. Lord knows we was in some distressful moments. So we had to stand on the word of God. Heal me, oh Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, oh Lord. <laughs> And I shall be saved, you know? So it was the word that you said in Jeremiah 33 and three, call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So we had to take him at his word. We had to mix everything we had. We had to mix that word with faith. Stand therefore, standing on the truth knowing that we were literally fighting for our lives. We had to recognize that this was a spiritual warfare, that it was war, it was a war going on and we was gonna win in the end. I don't care, we may have some battle grounds, so we, we, we had some cuts, we had some bruises, we may couldn't breathe, was coughing all night long, had fever and weak in the body, but guess what? Jesus reigned, hallelujah. He reigns, he's our redeemer, he's our healer. You cannot sit there and preach a word for 30 some years and you're gonna sit there and tell my Lord it's me. Rise up, rise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So you had to understand and we had to understand and people of God, you must understand that you have to mix the word of God with your faith. And it's because of our faith that we're not consumed. And we will still declare, great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness. When the enemy came up against us like a mighty flood, I had to say, Lord, where's the standard? You said, if I walk up right before you, you said we would eat the good of the land that we can declare anything in your name and you would do it for us. So, so Lord, I know I was looking to be a testimony. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. Talk about that. Looking. Talk about you say I was looking, looking to, to be, be a, a testimony. testimony. Come on. I was looking to be a testimony. When I was weak in my body, I had to say, oh, I'm strong. I had to start declaring the I am. The I am had to follow everything that I believed. I heard a man of God says that, you know, with the word of God says what? Let the weak say, say that I'm strong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let those that sick say that I am well. He mm -hmm. said, so really you're lying. Mm -mm. You ain't lying. Mm -mm. Prophetically. Come You're on. speaking that thing into existence. Mm -hmm. So we had to prophetically pray. We had to prophetically, our mindset had to change on a deathbed. That I'm not going to prepare myself to die, but I'm preparing myself to live. Hallelujah. And it was That's the love of God you. that brought us back. <laughs> it was love that brought us back. It was a song in the world say, love brought me back. Love, me brought, no. love brought you back. Uh -huh. It was the love of God that brought us back. <laughs> you you know, you you messed me up. I, 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 I thank God there's a mute. I hope folks weren't looking at it, but yeah. I, you messed me up. 
in here, in, in up, up in here. And yes. I, I tell you, I know, I know that faith has been birthed in the lives of people. I know that they've heard this word and they've said, I can go through whatever. I can come out on the other side yes. because my God is real and my faith is real. And that's what it is. It's a manifestation of the faith of God. Yes. I know yes. that you said that Pastor D, he had been teaching and we're going to, we're going to get him on with this. He's mm. going to have to teach that thing yes. on the meal that heals. Yes. And, uh, and you took that communion every day, every yeah. day, every and day. We had the little disposable ones and um, we, it, and, and there's something because he always keeps a few at the house, but when he went to church and he just grabbed a big old bag of them and he brought them home, not knowing that he had to declare healing over himself. And healing over our daughter, and we was being, we was gonna take them three times a day. He he didn't know that, but every opportunity we got, and he would be so weak, and I would be so weak, and he'll nudge me, and I'm balled up, and he'll nudge me, he'll say, "Here, babe, let's take a minute." And what it represents, it represents the power of God, that the same power. We say, "Greater works will we do." We can decree, and we we can declare the word of God over our life. And we would take that. This is your body. This is your blood. This is the meal that heals, that overcame everything. And we're overcomers. We're not dead, we're alive. We're alive in you. Hallelujah. And we Hallelujah. would just speak the word of God in this, over in our life. You, 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 you had you, to have that now faith. Look, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. You, we can do this forever because, you, because you've got that kind of content. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't wish it on you. No. But no. I'm so glad you came through it. Yes. Because amen. you're qualified to yes. give a message that we so desperately need to hear. Yes. Now, our time has slipped away and I just can't even thank you enough. And I know that my audience can't thank you enough. And whoever yes. hears this for time and time and time again, you can check us out. Go to uh, my mm -hmm. website at gloriouspowerministries.com, mm -hmm. click on watch, and oh, you'll be able cool. to see that again and again, uh, or either go to our YouTube channel and uh, click on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to see it again and again. God bless you again, Dr. G, and thank you. One thing I wanna leave with God's people is this, obey the voice of God. Regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it feels like, stand on the word of God. Do not allow your situation to dictate what God is doing in your life. He's gonna bring you out. So my prayer for you today, that if there's any sick among us, that you be healed by the power of God. If there are situations in your life that you may not understand, you will seek the face of God and ask God for revelation and knowledge and ask him what do what is the future that he has for your life that is not over to God say that is over. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. See you again next week for the spirit of revelation. Good night. Good night.